Welcome to live stream number 86. Today is Friday. We made it, folks. Friday the 27th of October 2017. Wow, I almost forgot what month we were in. It's Friday, man. It's a long, long, good week, but uh, a, uh, a long week. Today is all about CAM. So if you're not interested in, well, not quite all about CAM, but primarily about CAM. Talking about engraving. Uh, so if this have no interest for you, kick back, take the rest of the day off. I think that'll be fine. You probably worked hard enough. Today we're gonna talk about engraving. And we'll talk about a couple of different things when it comes to engraving because I've gotten a few, few quite a few of emails. Wow, I can't even, can't even speak on Fridays. Um, got a few emails about engraving um, and you know, the interesting thing about engraving is that there's kind of like a couple of different flavors of it. There is the cam portion where you machine it out. And I think it's important to remember that the cam inside of Fusion 360 primarily are written for CNC milling and turning. Uh, so like job shop type of engraving. And when we are talking about job shop type of engraving, we're many times talking about like marking parts with an engraving font. Um, but then of course there's also the more, um, you know, art perspective of it where people want to do, you know, more complicated engraving than just like stick font letters. Um, and Fusion can handle some of that. I will say though, uh, that Fusion is not uh, meant to like do really in-depth, crazy engraving, um, like crazy art kind of things. Well, you know what? Let's jump into a few. <laughs> Let's jump into the software and talk a little bit about it, and then um, and then you can see what we can do, and um, we'll go from there. See, we've got thirty-five people in here. Thank you so much for joining. All right, guys, thank you for coming. Let's jump into this. So the first thing I want to talk a little bit about before we get into uh, two fusion. Don't worry. Fusion is open, um, is, is is the different kinds of uh, fonts that we, we kind of like will work with inside of Fusion. Um, the first one, well, not where we are inside of Fusion. The first one is the standard text font that actually comes uh, with, with Fusion. Um, so if you click on this, you can insert text uh, in here. So if I just place my cursor somewhere, it doesn't really matter where, uh, you get a text box over here and uh, you can uh, type something in uh, like this and you can change the, um, the height of it if you want to. Now, what you're looking at right now is the standard Windows font, okay? So that is really what Fusion are using. Now, this is extremely important uh, that you know this because that's where you could potentially add different um, you know, fonts in here if you want uh, to use them. Now, one thing to be aware of is that Windows fonts are just um, kind of an image that is being projected. And if I zoom in on it, I hope I don't make you sick, you will see that it becomes very blurry. Um, and that is what we kind of call uh, raster in in kind of like software terminology. So it's an image, right? So uh, I have another image. I'll show you what I'm talking about. If we're opening up this image here, um, so this is thing <laughs> TGIF. Thank God it's Friday. So, uh, <laughs> so I had to do that. So if we zoom in on this, anybody who is not in the United States maybe don't know this, but there's also a restaurant chain called that over here. If I zoom in on it, See what happens? You've already seen this before, like where things get pixelated. Well, that is a raster, and that means that, um, you know, it, it's all these different kind of like boxes that have different colors on it. We can't really use this for much inside, uh, you know, we need like straight lines. Now, if I go back to Fusion, and uh, let's just place this uh, sketch here. Let's go in and create another sketch. Did I place that right on the plane? I'll do that, okay. And uh, let's just draw a box like this. Extrude that one, Q for extrude. 
Now, I, I am able to, inside of Fusion, I am able to extrude this. So I can go in here and hit it, and uh, I can either make it positive. I can actually also make it negative by dragging it in, and we now have uh, this in our block. But notice, this is important, notice all the different kinds of lines, uh, or the text is broken up into these segments. And that is kind of like, you will see the A here, for example, it has one right here. That is because it's this font, um, pixelated font that is kind of like uh, projected down. Now, it doesn't mean we can't machine it. We can absolutely uh, machine this inside of Fusion, but it's just important to know that that is kind of like what is happening. So if you have an image like this, a JPEG or PNG or whatever you have, and you want to, to bring that into Fusion and work with it, well, then you need to know that you are getting these pixelations here. Uh, that is just, you know, it goes back to, I mean, it goes back to, you know, garbage in, garbage out kind of thing. There is software out there that tries to vectorize some of this stuff. I have never had really great experience with it, um, but there is some of them. Now we could, of course, as you, I've done before, we could go up here to insert and we could insert this as a decal, for example, and uh, select that image or as a canvas, I guess, was maybe be the same kind of thing. We could insert it uh, like this here. So now it's an image, but what will we do with this? Well, we can't really do anything with it because again, it's an image other than of course, we could right click create a sketch Oops, let me rotate that around. And we can start tracing this, right? So if you're following this live stream pretty well, you know that we have different tools in here that we can go in and, uh, and kind of like create some different spline points on uh, this area. And then uh, we can go in here and we can kind of grab these spline points and we could kind of try to manipulate these spline points to kind of follow... Um, that outline uh, in here of, of that part and get a spline that is somewhat close to it. That's what we can do uh, with an, an image uh, when we bring it in. The two other formats that you need to know about um, is, if we go to the insert, is SVG and, and DXF. Um, so, and I'm going to get into the toolpath just in a second, but I just think this is kind of important that at least you, you know this. So SVG stands for, I think, Standard Vector Graphics. Uh, <laughs> I'm not 100% sure. Um, but what SVG is that that is actually a vector where the, the picture... Uh, we looked at before, this is what we call raster, but it's just like these different, you know, blocks um, that has different shading to it and it, you know, it, it creates a picture. SVGs becomes actually a, uh, a vector, so there is lines and arcs into it. Let me just roll back here to, uh, to before we inserted the, the image. Um, now, I did download uh, some SVGs and DXF of the same thing. Now, DXF is actually a Autodesk um, translation. So DXF, I think 1982 or something like that, Autodesk came out with this um, DXF, and it is um, it was created so other softwares could look at um, the AutoCAD drawings back in the 80s. So it is um, literally coming from there, but what it really is, is just, you know, uh, another form of geometry. A lot of uh, um, lasers and plasma cutters and so forth like these DXF files. So just so you know what, what, what it is. But so if I go up here and say, I wanna insert a, DX, a SVG file, and I go up and open that, and ha, huh, funny enough, I have an SVG file of the same one I had that image of. Isn't that just special? Um, so that comes in here. Now, I can, of course, move it around with these handles. You've seen me use those. We've used those a ton in, in other applications. So we can kind of like drag it in here, place it wherever we want, and, and hit OK. Um, now, this sketch 
here. Oh, I placed it on the same. I didn't place it on the top. Um, this sketch here is is actually a geometry um, that, that you can actually work with. It's really just a bunch of splines. Um, but one of the things I noticed with this, if you look at the G, and, and this has nothing to do with fusion. This is just really actually, I think if I go back out and open up the, the image, you might even be able to see it there. I don't know if it's going to be too pixelated. Right around here, but I could see it on the website. By the way, where did I get this? Um, I went to Google. And I searched free SVG, and then it came up with love SVG, and I thought that was interesting. Uh, so I went out here, and there's all different kinds of, uh, now I've been playing around with my zoom in here. There's all kinds of different uh, SVG files that you can download for free. So, and I think when I looked at it here, um, you can see the G on their website. I don't know how good that comes through with you, but the G is already screwed up over here. So it, this has nothing to do with fusion, but of course, now where it comes in is geometry. <laughs> we can actually go in here, we can click on this and we can delete it, right? And uh, we can delete some of this geometry and maybe try with splines to create something that maybe is a little bit better than that, right? I want to snap to the grid. Thank you. So we can go in here and we can work with uh, with these entities and we can now create a spline uh, that that kind of fits into into this. Um, the same thing if we went out and we used uh, the DXF. It's kind of like I don't really know of any differences between between that. Let's go back to our body here. Um, I also downloaded the, the DXF of this one. So select the plain sketch, click the DXF file, bring that one in. It actually comes in huge. Again, like that is one of the things you're dealing with when you're working with, uh, you know, with this kind of importing things. Um, of course, the great thing is that um, it is against sketch geometry, so I can use uh, different different tools in here. If I go in and edit it, if it's sketch, um, I can actually go in here and I can scale it down with Fusion. So I can select all of this and I can scale it way, way down to whatever I want. And then I can use the Move tool Right, and now we're back to where it's still a little big. Um, so this is kind of like the same thing. All right, let me just place this. Let's place this and then uh, get into the cam portion and talk a little bit about the different types of cam we can use with this. So let's place it right there. Let's go back into sketch. Select all these and just do it around. This doesn't really matter. Let's go 0 0.5. Nope, 0 0.2. Okay, this is the great thing about me doing these live. But I like I like to do these things live because that makes you see what I have to do. So it's not all like a cooking show where I'm pulling things out of the oven all the time. Okay, so uh, now we have this uh, this. This is the DXF, but the same thing as the SVG. So what can we do with it from a, uh, a cam standpoint? We have a couple of, of, of cool options inside of Fusion. Let me get out of the sketch. A couple of cool uh, options in here. So if I go into our cam workspace, um, well, there's kind of three different tool pads you can use to do engraving. And I say that and then I think about it and says, well, maybe there's more. But uh, primarily, <laughs> there is Trace, um, but XD will also work, um, you know, on curved surfaces, you can see. Um, and then there is um, the engraving tool path in here. Now, if we start with Trace, so select it. Oh, I got to probably create a setup, right? Create a setup. Do the 
It is Friday. Okay. Um, trace. Select the tool. And uh, here's a little tip I want to share with you if you didn't know this. Scroll down to the bottom. I'm going to select the metric tools. And there's all these different tools in it. Now, if you're a little bit concerned about what can I use for engraving, up here there is this filter button called operation. And if you click engraving and hit OK, it will actually filter down to what tools right now in the tutorial library have, um, have engraving tools. So we can select one of these out of, this is out of the standard tutorial library that you also have. So we can select this <clears throat> and um, then we can select our geometry and it will chain uh, the area. So you're going to have to uh, to select uh, each chain manually. You can't window in here uh, as of yet, maybe someday. I don't know. Um, we don't need to select all these holes. So just to select these 10 chains and hit OK. And we get uh, this engraving here. Now, I wanted to give one tip, and this is just my my preference when it comes to like engraving on, on a machine. I normally always um, engraved to the top of the surface when I did the cam. Um, so I did a lot of like marking parts for, uh, for customers. So, so um, they had to have a little number on there. That's one way you can use uh, engraving. You can actually also uh, use engraving if you want to uh, to mark a part. Um, I don't know if this is important to you, but I one time had a, a, a scenario where I was making some parts. I knew another company across country was making the exact same parts. Uh, so we were producing the exact same parts. Now there started to be some issues with some quality uh, on these parts from the main customer. I was kind of complaining that some of them were not great. So what I ended up doing was I used the engraving to put a tiny little engraving on the part. One place where I knew it would not matter on the function of the part. Nothing you would ever see. Like if you picked up the part, like if you didn't know it was there, uh, you would never see it. But that was the way that uh, I made sure that, you know, when they started actually wanted to blame somebody that we could be like, it's not us. Um, but sorry, now I'm, I'm getting sidetracked. I always program to the face itself because uh, if you have ever tried to engrave parts, uh, you know, a couple of thousands depth uh, can really change how the whole engraving are looking. So, um, you know, if you're going five thousandths, now I'm talking in, 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 in inches, but if you're going five thousandths of an inch versus ten thousandths of an inch, your engraving is going to look completely different. So I always prefer to just program it to zero, and then out of the control, I would just adjust the depth of that cutter. Um, so that was maybe a trick that hopefully you could find useful. Um, all right, so um, here is the, the tool path. Now, if we're going to simulate it, uh, we hit play, you will see that the tool is going to follow our, uh, thank goodness it's Friday, sign here. Um, does a, a, a marvelous job, uh, kind of like tracing around that. Um, now, one of the things you will notice, though, if I, oh, let me go ahead and turn the stock on. And let's go in and change the color to, I like ceramic. I don't know if this shines, seems like it's shining a lot. Um, and we can turn this one to tail. So now you can kind of see how the cutter is kind of like, well, you got to maybe look at it from here. It looked like it was cutting outside the line. It's cutting right on the line, okay? Uh, but of course, it has kind of like that that taper. Well, the depth of this cut right now is actually zero. Um, what you're seeing that we're cutting right now is the stock. If I go in here and say edit stock, you will see that there actually by default in Fusion, if you're using relative size stock, um, there will be a millimeter if you're in metric added onto that. This is important, right? Because this gives you a wrong visual if you just touched up on top. Uh, of the part. So I'm just going to change that and prove to you that I'm not lying. <laughs> if I go back in again and simulate now, you will see that we don't 
uh, we don't get anything. But so here you can actually see the difference if we're doing it like this. You will see the difference between, you saw one millimeters, if we do a half a millimeter of stock, or this is the same as we lowered our cutter a half a millimeter, you can kind of see how different it looks. Like this will be make a huge difference. A half a millimeter when you're engraving can really make things uh, look a lot different between looking professional and looking um, a little a little crappy. So what I'm trying to get at with this is that the tray tool, trace tool path will just follow right on the line and there's no depth to it. Okay, there's no depth to the end. It's just gonna machine right down to wherever that uh, line is. Um, and that's actually, that's actually fine um, for, for this kind of, uh, of, of work right here maybe, but uh, the developers wanted to do uh, a little bit better than that because sometimes if you're a pro of your engraving like machine parts, you don't really want to use uh, like fat letters like this. You don't want uh, you don't want it to to have like double lines. So if I go back in, oops, now I clicked on Fusion five times. I know my mistake. Sorry. Um, if we go in here and we're looking at at this. Um, you maybe don't want to, you know, see how here on the F, how it's kind of like following the line down here, follow over here. Maybe don't look too professional if you're doing like uh, CNC parts. Now, what you of course can do with this is we can go into the model environment and we can hit Q just like we did with our text before. And we can now select this text and we can now cut it into, into the parts. Now, just like I said before with the text, uh, we get a lot of funky kind of um, move or, or, or like lines depending on what kind of text you're bringing in. But this is where in the cam environment that the engraving toolpath is uh, is hot. Uh, what the engraving toolpath will do, I'm going to use the same cutter um, and let's just select the outline here of the part. And many times, you know, when I'm doing this, I just hit OK. And let's see what we get. Now, what the engraving tool path will do, and, and if you look at the at the lines, you might think they look weird. Well, it will actually, it actually looks at the width of the letters and adjust the cutter depth depending on the width of the letters. This is, uh, this is pretty neat. Let's try to play this through here. Now, you will see the cutter probably going to go pretty deep right now. But you see how it's actually carving out the total center of our letters here. Okay. So what do I mean about it will adjust the depth? Well, it will actually adjust like where between in the F here, you can kind of like see how it's wide up here. So there's a flat spot where when it's narrow here and here, it actually raises it up. So the engraving toolpath inside of Fusion will actually adjust um, the height, the Z height as it's machining around and giving you uh, a lot cleaner type of, of toolpath. Uh, oh, I, I guess I should say depending on what you want, right? Because our trays, you know, our trays is definitely, I would not say that that's a bad, bad toolpath whatsoever. Uh, it's just following the line around and gives us kind of like, I don't know, a, a two-dimensional kind of nice layout of this. And if this is what you uh, you want, um, if this is what you want to end up with, then, well, you won, right? Um, don't let me be the one telling you not to use it. <laughs> but what is nice about the, the other engraving is that that will actually carve out all the material between uh, inside the letters. And, 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 and what is nice about this is um, if you have ever uh, done machining like in the past, many times with CAD soft, or CAM software, you had to find like a stick font um, that you had to install into the machine. So like stick font means like a, a single line font um, and, uh, and use that so you could just trace down the center of the letters and now suddenly 
uh, you have these capabilities with this engraving. So two toolpath you should definitely know about the trace and the, the engraving. Two different toolpaths doing kind of like some uh, some some cool stuff, um, you know, right in there. Now you can, of course, also use some of the other toolpaths. I'm not saying that you're not allowed to use the other ones. Um, we could absolutely in here uh, use a, a 2D adaptive clearing to machine this out, um, but then it becomes more of, I would say, a pocket operation uh, versus, I don't even know what the smallest flat end mill I have. I don't even know if it will fit in there. It will not. Um, doo -doo -doo. What is the smallest? That may be a ball end mill in here. Um, that we could absolutely, you know, start selecting, uh, you know, the parts like this. It looks like the chain maybe is a little screwed up. Um, but we could start machining the, the pockets out here. This is maybe not a good example to use this on. Yeah, it definitely looks like that adapter doesn't like this. All right, here we go. So, um, you know, you could definitely do something like this. Now, there's a ball end mill. I'm not recommending you using this one, but uh, you could definitely use this to create a, a pocket for this if, um, if you want to. Right? So there we have the G. Um, one last thing I just wanted to show you too. There is one other tool path that is... Um, that, that you can use if you have like a five axis machine, and that is um, the multi axis contour, kind of like meant for the same thing to be able to uh, engrave on curved, uh, on curved surfaces uh, like this. Um, and it's actually pretty easy to set up. What the five, what the, what this toolpath will do is it will stay normal to the curved surface, okay. Uh, I know that there's only a few people in here who probably uh, maybe are using that type of machine. So that's why I'm just kind of like skipping on it quick. But uh, let's select a, we can select our same one millimeter ball in a mill here. And we can drive the, and it's going to do the same thing as the trace kind of does. It's just going to stay in the center uh, of this here. And then that will, um, that will machine. Oh, don't put the stock on. Uh, that will machine the this part here with the five axis kind of like uh, movement um, around here. Okay, that was kind of like what I had planned on showing. I hope that it kind of like makes sense between the JPEG, the raster to vector uh, that, you know, something that is like photo pixelated, um, you know, the software can't really drive that. So you're going to have to go in and trace it. Um, but SVG or DXF is uh, your solution. You could, for example, use something like um, Illustrator. Is something that uh, I have I have used a lot in the past. Where I had well, I didn't use it. I requested the text from my customer. They sent it through Illustrator, gave me an SVG file or a DXF file, and that was uh, what we drove for uh, for any artwork. I hope this was kind of useful, enlightening. At least now you kind of know what these engraving tools inside of uh, Fusion can do. All right, it is Friday. We're going to end this. Uh, the one thing I got to say, though, uh, before I forget. So next week, we're definitely going to do some live streams, but I can't quite guarantee that I'm going to be on Monday or Tuesday. So I'm going to have to wing that one. I, uh, I have to. I am moving office, but it's exciting in itself. Um, but, um, so just know that if I'm not on Monday or Tuesday that I, uh, you know, I have to skip out down in the description area of the video, my email address, any future topics you would like to see, shoot me an email about it. Also now where it is cam Friday, um, I should also tell you that, uh, the CNC handbook is down there. And let me just quickly remind you that Autodesk university is coming up next month in Las Vegas. Um, and the whole CAM team will be there. There's going to be a bunch of CAM classes. There is actually a specific day track that was created just for CAM users. So you don't have to buy for the whole 
three days. You can just buy for one day pass. Um, you know, if there's something you're interested in, uh, I didn't leave a link. Send me an email and I'll send you some information about that. I will be there, meet you for breakfast or something like that if you uh, if you make it out to uh, Las Vegas next month. Um, I think it's the week of the 12th, I think. Okay, guys. Yes, there is a cost with, uh, with Autodesk University. I got to say that. Okay. Um, that's it. I'm going to, I'm going to celebrate weekend. I have a beer in my fridge with my name on it. That'll be opened in about an hour or so. Hope you have an awesome weekend too. And, uh, I'm going to do what I normally do. I'll end the broadcast here guys. I hope you have an awesome, awesome weekend. And I'll jump into the live stream and say hi to everybody. Take care.